person only mode. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, or afternoon if you're on the East Coast. My name is Alex Handy. I'm the senior editor of Software Development Times. I'm here to introduce to you Harry Krug from Couchbase. Harry Krug is a senior a principal solutions architect and customer advocate for Couchbase. Harry has worked with hundreds of users and companies to deploy and maintain Couchbase's NoSQL database technology. He has over six years of experience in high performance caching and database systems and is with us today to discuss Couchbase and Enterprise. So without further ado, I would like to hand it over to Harry. Thank you very much, Alex. Thank you, Shauna, for uh, helping organize this. And, and thanks, everybody on the line, for, uh, for attending. Um, as Alex said, um, my name is Perry Krug, um, a principal solutions architect with Couchbase. I've been with the company about, uh, about five years, uh, working with all of our customers, uh, big and small, uh, as they uh, move to deploy Couchbase. Um, so I wanted to talk today a little bit. Uh, we'll, we'll spend a little bit of time talking about Couchbase itself. Um, uh, spend uh, a couple slides talking about the main drivers uh, for NoSQL uh, adoption, which I, I imagine many of you are, are familiar with already. Uh, the meat of the presentation will focus on uh, a few of our customers um, looking at how they've solved some of their business and technical problems uh, or challenges and, uh, and, and looking a little bit at their architecture of using Couchbase. Um, and then we'll spend the last few minutes uh, talking about the, the key features of, of Couchbase that helps uh, support these customers. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to, to type them into the, the question panel. Um, and uh, in the middle, if there are a lot of questions, I'll, I'll take a break and, and answer them. If not, uh, we can do that all, all at the end. Uh, just one quick slide on uh, Couchbase as a company. Uh, we have been known and, and made a, a name for ourselves really as the performance, uh, availability, and scalability leader uh, amongst the other NoSQL databases. Uh, we've had a track record of focusing on innovation within our technology, uh, both at the storage and the memory caching and, and clustering layer. Uh, we're well over 225 employees now. Uh, closer to, to 250. Um, we've been growing very, very significantly in the last few years, and we have a, a very worldwide presence. We have support and engineering teams uh, spread around the world, uh, helping to, to support our customers and to and to build our product. Um, so the, you know, why are we all here today? Well, uh, NoSQL has become uh, a major driving force in the database and, and application development. Uh, areas um, and uh, really as a departure from some of the relational databases that we've all known and used over the over the last 30 or 40 years. Um, and these are just some some quotes from from a customer of ours and, and from Gartner uh, talking about uh, relational databases um, in, in how they have limitations in trying to meet the needs of today's uh, customers, today's applications, today's requirements. When we look at Couchbase and we look at NoSQL, uh, most of our uh, customers, most of users of NoSQL are really looking to get uh, four key things out of uh, a NoSQL database that they don't find uh, in a relational database. Um, and those really focus around uh, consistency of performance. So it's not good to just be fast some of the time. You have to be fast all of the time. Uh, and importantly, you have to make sure that one user's action is not able to slow down uh, the rest of your of your activities. So in a in a relational database, being able to run uh, a very intensive query and have that impact and affect the experience of all of the other users of that database uh, is simply not acceptable in today's uh, always connected and, and, and social media uh, applications. Um, scalability on the top right there uh, really talks about being easy to scale out, adding more commodity hardware uh, to, your, to your database layer, uh, both easily in terms of uh, no downtime and not, not having to re-architect your whole application. Uh, but also affordable, being able to use commodity hardware, not having to buy a bigger and more expensive system every time you want to uh, add more capacity or, or handle more load. Um, high availability uh, is extremely important, especially in the internet world of today, uh, where uh, applications are expected to be online 24 by 7. There is no longer the ability to take a planned downtime on a, on a Saturday or a Sunday night. Uh, 
Um, and so availability needs to be built in in, in two ways. One, uh, in terms of fault tolerance. Obviously, systems are going to fail, hardware, software, network, um, and a system needs to be resilient to those failures. But more importantly, a system needs to be able to uh, sustain uh, and provide the ability to do maintenance, uh, either software upgrades, um, hardware changes, uh, changes to the database or maintenance in terms of compaction and index building. All of these things need to happen online because, again, we can't afford to take the system down or, or put it into a degraded mode uh, just so that we can do these regular sorts of maintenance. So that's where availability comes in in, in really two ways. Um, and in the, in the bottom right, arguably the most important aspect of a, of a NoSQL database is its flexibility of, of data model, the ability to handle data uh, in a variety of formats all at the same time, the ability to change those formats uh, as your application grows and, and evolves. Um, and this is something that's been a long pioneer uh, or a long, long standing requirement of, uh, of NoSQL um, and, and certainly a, a part of the Couchbase uh, architecture. And when we look at Couchbase, uh, especially in comparison to other technologies, both relational databases and, uh, and other NoSQL technologies, we find that these are the four areas that Couchbase really is the only technology that's able to do all together, all four together, um, rather than uh, other technologies that can do one or the other, maybe two, uh, but as soon as you go to scale or you try to uh, put more load on, maybe the performance slows down or the availability uh, gets lower. Um, and so <clears throat> Couchbase has been built from the ground up really with these four key characteristics in mind. Um, one quick note on, on really what Couchbase is. Couchbase is a, uh, a real-time interactive database within the, the NoSQL space focusing on uh, operational workloads, real-time user interactive applications. Uh, and we work very well and, and closely with uh, Hadoop and the other batch-oriented uh, analytic type databases. Uh, we don't see that we really compete with, the, with, with Hadoop or with other uh, technologies there. Rather, we are complementary. Uh, most of our customers, uh, I would say a, a vast majority of our customers have both Couchbase and Hadoop or Couchbase and another uh, analytics database that they use to help serve the entire application, but it's Couchbase that is really serving the, uh, the user traffic uh, the, that, that you and I see at the end uh, of a website. Uh, just a quick look at some of the customers uh, that are already using Couchbase in production. This is a, a very small list. We have well over five or 600 uh, customers running Couchbase in, in production today. Um, I think this, this slide gives you a good perspective of how broadly Couchbase is being adopted. We are not just websites and, and Web 2.0 applications. It's not just high tech. Uh, applications, but it's retail, uh, finance, the, the travel industry is, is very, uh, very big for Couchbase, uh, e-commerce and, and digital advertising. All of these uh, areas have some sort of web uh, or high scale need um, and are using Couchbase to help, to help meet that. Um, so let's, let's dive in and, and focus on a couple of those names. Um, we're going to look through a series of use cases um, and a series of, of our customers um, and, and how they've adopted and are using Couchbase. So uh, taking a, a slightly different look at, at a customer perspective, uh, these are 10 main areas or key areas that Couchbase uh, has been able to provide uh, an application or, or a use case within. Uh, and you see quite a wide range from <clears throat> profile management to, to fraud detection, real-time big data, uh, mobile applications. Um, and all of these really are, again, focusing around the interactive nature of an application, the need for an application to provide uh, thousands, millions, hundreds of millions of users uh, with an interactive data layer uh, that they can uh, both read and, and write to um, and support the, the needs of that application. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so if we take just a look at a couple of these, uh, these four, caching, uh, the Internet of Things, uh, a catalog, and real-time big data. That's what I'm going to focus on today. Um, and if you're interested in learning more, certainly we can have a, a follow-up conversation. Um, you can reach out to, to, to us at Couchbase, and we're happy to tell you uh, about some of these other uh, technologies or other use cases that uh, our customers are using Couchbase for. So the first one, um, a fairly simple uh, case, uh, high availability caching, or, or HA caching. 
Um, and the, the challenge here, uh, what businesses are, are looking to do is really to provide very low latency and high throughput access, uh, usually to a variety of different data sources, potentially across a variety of different uh, backend systems. And the goal is to really uh, both improve the performance of the application and also to reduce the load on those backend systems. Um, so we have ideas of HTML and JSON and protobuf being stored. Um, the other technologies and other caching technologies have uh, challenges with being set up and, and monitoring. Some are not persistent. Some only support certain data types or certain uh, application environments. Um, and some tend to, tend to slow down under load. Uh, with Couchbase, uh, our engineers are the ones who built the Memcached uh, caching layer many, many years ago, about 11 years ago. Um, and those engineers then came back together to create a, a persistent database that was really a memory first architecture, um, using Memcached as the caching layer um, and, and adding things like clustering and replication and persistence to make uh, the, the Memcached an even better cache. Um, and uh, so one of the, the customers that has adopted Couchbase very, very widely for their caching needs is, is Concur. Uh, you, you, you may be familiar with Concur. They are uh, a uh, expense report system, a SaaS-based, software as a service-based uh, expense report expense reporting system, um, and they have very, very high load and very, very spiky load. Uh, usually at the end of the month is when everybody does expense reports, and so uh, there's a huge load on their uh, on their systems, on their databases um, uh, at that time, as well as when uh, administrators and, and other uh, HR and finance are going through to, to approve those reports. And so uh, a couple of years ago, I think about three and a half, four years ago, uh, they decided to, to implement a caching solution. They didn't have any one before. For, um, and they chose Couchbase uh, because of our history and, and heritage with Memcached. Um, and since then, uh, Concur has gone on to deploy Couchbase very, very widely, not only for caching, but also for uh, their persistent database layer in, in other parts of their application. Um, and uh, if you go online, you'll see some of the presentations that Concur has given about Couchbase, um, talking about how the overall experience and response time on their uh, website and application has dropped um, and the performance really improved uh, since, since implementing Couchbase. Um, Concur is also interesting. They use Couchbase both from .NET and from Java uh, applications. Um, and so Couchbase, we as a company and the technology provide uh, APIs for all of these uh, languages, Java, .NET, C, Perl, Python, PHP, Ruby, Node.js, Go. Um, and so making it very easy to use a variety of different application technologies on top of a single caching or, or database layer. So if we take a quick look, uh, this is a, an architecture view of how uh, Concur has, has deployed Couchbase. You see uh, on the far left there uh, users coming in via their, their browsers or even mobile devices hitting an application layer. There's a load balancer in there um, and, and that application layer um, is accessing both the Couchbase distributed caching layer there on the right as well as the, the relational database uh, system and, and many of those um, within Concur on the, on the back end. Um, so an application will first uh, read from Couchbase, and if the data is there, get that data very, very quickly. Um, if the data is not there, go and get it from the relational database as they would have uh, without a caching layer. Take that response and put it back into Couchbase so that uh, the next time the same application or the next time that the same request comes along, uh, the application can get it uh, very, very quickly from the caching layer, uh, also reducing the load on that relational database. Uh, Concur has been able to save uh, a large amount of money, um, not by removing their relational database. They still want to have that for, for other uh, utilities and, and, and capabilities, but uh, by not having to spend as much to scale that relational layer even further. Uh, over the years before implementing Couchbase, they had a regular increase of the amount of licenses and the amount of money that they had to spend uh, on uh, Oracle and their Postgres databases. Um, and now with, with Couchbase, that increase has been dramatically reduced or, or even removed so that they just continue using what they have at the relational database layer, but they don't have to uh, always increase it further year after year. 
so that's the, the beginning and introduction. That's this is a very common area for customers to get get used to Couchbase, get started with Couchbase. Um, obviously, everybody out there today, uh, the vast majority of companies have some sort of relational database layer, um, and it's a very comfortable and, and effective approach uh, to use Couchbase as a caching layer on top of that, while they are getting used to and getting gaining experience with NoSQL. Um, so if we take a look at, at another uh, use case, another example, uh, storing uh, product and pricing and catalog uh, information. Um, and this is the idea of uh, storing uh, inventory, storing product information um, in, a, in a centralized service um, that can then be fed to uh, a variety of applications, both internally or, or, or even externally. Um, the, the main requirements here you need to be able to store a large amount uh, of data, so the system needs to be able to scale um, uh, to support that. Uh, if the data is in usually in a variety of different formats, uh, so when you're storing uh, information about apples in your store and you're storing information about shoes and jeans and uh, computers all in the same store, all of those have different information, different pieces of information about them, and you need to be able to store that all side by side uh, within the same within the same database. And then when you're centralizing all of this information, you're putting it into the same place uh, and then supplying access to it across a variety of applications, uh, the load, both the read and write uh, load to the system is going to increase uh, very, very, very much. Um, and so uh, when we look at Couchbase for this, uh, Couchbase is a very, very uh, attractive solution. Uh, we support JSON uh, as our data model. Uh, which allows you not only to store uh, data of different formats side by side, but also to change uh, each of those pieces of data uh, as the application demands it. Uh, we have that built-in caching layer, um, uh, again, from our history of, of with MCACHD, um, and that allows us to provide very, very high read and write throughput. Um, and as we'll see, uh, our ability to scale out uh, simply by adding more nodes of Couchbase uh, makes it a very attractive solution because many of these databases, many of these uh, product catalogs start off very, very small. They want to start with only a couple nodes uh, as they gain adoption and as they add more and more traffic and data to them to be able to grow out, grow out and scale out from there. So you don't have to start with, a, with 100 nodes uh, just because the technology demands it. So a customer of ours, uh, actually over in the UK, um, Tesco uh, is the largest UK retailer, um, and they've made a big adoption of, of NoSQL and, and Couchbase specifically. Um, they're using Couchbase uh, on a variety of different applications, but the one we're going to focus on today uh, is their, their product and, and pricing catalog. Um, in the past, they had this data stored in a variety of, of silos of different relational databases. They wanted to centralize that data. They wanted to provide fast and very easy access to it uh, to be able to share uh, amongst uh, Tesco and their associated brands, to be able to share down to the stores themselves, not only online. Um, and so they chose Couchbase to, to do that. Um, and uh, they deployed Couchbase um, as that consolidated uh, database service. Uh, they're taking in data from their MDM. Uh, MDM stands for Master Data Manager. Um, they're taking it in in a CSV format and then converting it to, uh, to a JSON uh, to store in, in Couchbase. Um, and they are currently an, uh, storing up to, up to 10 million objects. Uh, the plan is to scale that even further and be able to support well over 35,000 operations per second. So if we take a look at the, the architecture of the application, uh, it's a little bit different than we saw at Concur. Uh, here you have an application tier. This is their REST service that they are uh, exposing to the other consumers of their, uh, of their service. And that application tier only knows about Couchbase, uh, has access to, to the Couchbase cluster, uh, and all the data that it is requesting is available there. On the side, on the left side, you see uh, an Oracle database. That's their MDM, their, their master data manager. That is exporting a CSV file on a nightly basis. Uh, actually comes across in multiple CSV files. Uh, and they wrote a little connector service that takes uh, that CSV uh, and uses the Couchbase library, our SDK, um, to convert, um, convert that to JSON and write it into the Couchbase cluster. Uh, so they do nightly updates 
uh, of the data uh, from the other uh, changes within their system and then provide the product and pricing catalog uh, out to their uh, to the stores and to the other uh, consumers within Tesco. A variety of different services uh, leverage this uh, to get very, very fast and, um, and, and centralized uh, product information. Okay, uh, moving right along, another uh, great uh, area uh, to talk about and, and certainly gaining a lot of, of excitement and buzz uh, in, the, uh, in the world today is the idea of the, the Internet of Things. Um, this is uh, around the idea of uh, capturing data um, and, and sending data out to uh, a variety of different sensors, uh, putting, the, putting uh, internet connected devices uh, on top of uh, millions and potentially billions of different devices, um, automobiles, trains, um, car, uh, cell phones and sensors and oil and gas and, and smart meters, all of these things are becoming connected. Uh, and there's a need to capture and store the information and then provide uh, analytics on them. Um, and not just analytics that you go away and run a report uh, for, for a day and come back with the answer, but the need to provide very, very real-time analytics uh, because many of these SIM systems, many of these sensors are going to change their behavior based upon the information that they are, that they are receiving. Um, we're talking about uh, billions upon billions of different data points, uh, data coming in at, at, at very, very high rates, um, needing to be constantly connected, um, and also being able to evolve that data um, and change it and store data from different types of sensors and different types of devices uh, side by side uh, as, the app, as the application is growing, as the application is, is changing. Um, a, a customer of ours that is that has chosen to use Couchbase for something uh, very similar to this. And Internet of Things is a very broad term. Uh, we're going to talk about a, a specific use case here from from Verizon. Um, they uh, Verizon provides uh, obviously the the cell phones and the uh, the, the landlines that, that we all know and love, uh, but they also provide a service to corporations. So uh, a Couchbase, for instance, if they are giving out cell phones and MiFi devices and laptops uh, to all of their users, uh, they want to be able to manage that. Um, and Verizon gives them the, the tools and the utilities to, to manage uh, the, the devices, check the usage, um, and, and provide real-time uh, reports uh, of uh, how Couchbase's users of the Verizon network uh, are behaving. They chose Couchbase um, for, for a variety of reasons, mostly the, the speed and the scalability, the ability to handle uh, hundreds of thousands or even millions of, of different users, uh, storing billions of, of data points, being able to scale out, uh, but also being able to ingest and, uh, and serve out that data very, very quickly. Another key uh, component of Couchbase that you'll see here at Verizon uh, is our ability to replicate across data centers. Um, to do that very, very easily um, and, and performantly. And so the, ar the architecture uh, of this service that the Verizon has now deployed um, and is running in production, um, there are, you see in the top right and top left cor uh, corners, the Verizon corporate customers, so Couchbase or Cisco or EMC, um, they have uh, a number of devices that they are uh, giving out to their users, to their employees. Those devices are reporting uh, information into uh, an ingestion layer, and then that goes into a Couchbase cluster. Uh, those, that Couchbase cluster is replicating across multiple data centers. Um, in this picture, the Verizon is using just two data centers, but Couchbase uh, can replicate across any number uh, of, uh, of data centers. You see also that each Couchbase cluster uh, is unique to a data center. So each cluster uh, can be of different size, can be uh, growing or shrinking, can have different configuration. Uh, each cluster is its own separately and independently managed uh, set of nodes that then replicate between each other uh, across the data centers. Uh, on top of that, uh, there's then a reporting layer um, that is uh, providing uh, a bit of analytics a bit of real-time uh, information about those devices that is then presented as a, as a dashboard, as a report uh, that the IT uh, managers of each, uh, each company are able to, um, uh, are able to use and, and view to understand the, uh, the information about their employees, understand the usage, the, the, um, the number of devices that are out there, who they're assigned to, all these sort of things. Um, 
And the, the last topic uh, for now that I'm going to, to, to talk about, or the last use case, um, the idea of real-time big data. Um, and early on, I, I mentioned that uh, <clears throat> big data uh, was really the, the combination of uh, NoSQL uh, being the operational layer, layer and Hadoop uh, being the background uh, analytics. Um, in some cases, big data really just refers to uh, that background uh, analytics. What we've seen start to happen is uh, that Hadoop layer uh, is not able to provide information fast enough. It's very powerful to provide deep, deep analytics, uh, but not uh, with the real-time nature or with the speed uh, that an application wants. Um, and so there's now uh, emerging a new way uh, or a, an additional way uh, of providing analytics on, on streaming data. Um, the, the requirements are to be able to handle uh, lots and lots of data uh, at, at high speed as, they, as it is streaming into a system, to be able to do computations and analytics on that data in real time, uh, to be able to connect to both importing and exporting to, uh, to other analytics pro uh, platforms. Um, so scalability and throughput are, are extremely important, um, as well as the, the flexibility of a, of a data model. Um, PayPal uh, is the customer we're going to, to talk about today. They use Couchbase, uh, again, in a variety of different ways. Many of our customers use Couchbase uh, not for just one particular application, but for, uh, for, for many of them. Um, you can see some information here about PayPal. They're, they're obviously one of the biggest and, and leading providers uh, of online payment services, handling many, many terabytes of data, uh, billions of, of documents in, in Couchbase, um, and the, the key uh, requirement is being able to capture and analyze uh, that their web traffic, the, the traffic that their users are doing, being able to provide to do that in real time so that they can have a response back to the application, back to the user uh, before the transaction is complete or, or potentially even blocking the transaction. Um, and so uh, the, the requirements for throughput at scale are, are very significant. Um, they chose Couchbase uh, as that layer, as, the, as a platform. Uh, to, uh, to, to capture that information, to provide the analytics on top of. Uh, you'll see in a minute how we integrate with Storm uh, and Hadoop uh, in order to get this, this streaming and, and real-time analytics. Um, re low latency uh, is extremely important for this system, uh, not only uh, because the end user's experience needs to be very fast, but because they need to process and sometimes go back and forth to the database many, many times for a given transaction to do a given piece of, of analytics. Uh, they also wanted to be able to replicate this across data centers um, for, for higher availability and, and geographic uh, load distribution. So if we take a look at the architecture now, uh, you see it gets a little bit more complicated. Um, this is taking a broader view of, of how PayPal is using Couchbase. Um, first on the, on the very left-hand side, you see Couchbase cluster as a cache and a session store. This is really just supporting the application traffic, uh, the users as they are clicking around uh, and accessing PayPal's website and web application. Um, some of the HTML, some of the, the data is cached uh, in Couchbase as well as uh, being used as a session store um, for users before they have actually logged in. Uh, PayPal is also about to deploy Couchbase for their main user authentication database. The, the difference between session uh, and user, uh, session really is before uh, you have logged in, uh, before the, the application knows who you are. Uh, they'd like to be able to store some information about what you have clicked on and where you have been before, kind of like cookies, uh, but stored on the, on the application side versus a user database uh, that is really after you have logged in when you provide your username and password, now they know much more about you and can store your preferences um, and the other products that you viewed and, and looked at the other transactions you made. And so Couchbase is being used as, as both of those. And then if we look into this picture a little more, uh, that the, in the central kind of right uh, hand side of things, Couchbase has been integrated with Storm. Uh, and Storm is a, is a real time uh, uh, called a complex events processing system, or CEP. Uh, Storm is used uh, to, to take data in uh, from a variety of sources, move it through a pipeline, perform some analytics on it, and then, and then produce a result. Um, and in this case, 
uh, Storm is exporting data both to Hadoop uh, and to an analytics layer uh, that uh, pay PayPal and the and the users and the administrators are able to use uh, to to glean information in real time about what the users are doing on their on their website uh, and the and the PayPal app. Um, so uh, with that, uh, I think that's the the last. Yeah, the last of the use cases. Um, maybe I'll take just a minute here uh, and pause to see if anybody has uh, any questions um, and uh, take a minute to answer those. Otherwise, we can save them for the, uh, for the end of the presentation. Doesn't look like anybody has, has put any in yet. Uh, so hopefully you're all uh, following along very intensely and we'll, uh, uh, we'll have lots of questions at the end. Oh, here's one. Great. Uh, so uh, a question is, uh, can Couchbase cache video applications? And do we have an example use case? Uh, so that's a, that's a great question. Um, and Couchbase absolutely does uh, have a part and have a use case within uh, video and video streaming applications. Um, Couchbase itself is not uh, the best choice for storing the actual video content. Uh, typically that is done from a media file server or even a, a CDN uh, out at the edges of the network. Uh, but where Couchbase plays a big part uh, is in storing the metadata uh, about those videos. And so sites like Vimeo uh, and, and, uh, and others use Couchbase um, to store uh, the metadata to store the information about a video, to store uh, the the hierarchy of a video lookup, to store the comments, uh, the the uh, ratings, all of that about a video, where the actual content uh, can be streamed from from somewhere else. Um, Couchbase has a limit of 20 megabytes uh, for a given object, um, and so you certainly could store a, a small video in there, or even chunk your video up. Uh, but it doesn't really make much sense um, to, to store uh, the video or, or other media itself uh, in, in Couchbase. Uh, a a follow-up to that question, what kind of data is suitable for being stored in Couchbase? So Couchbase is not a file server. Couchbase is not a log server. Couchbase is a, is a uh, JSON or, or document-oriented database, and so you're storing data about things uh, much like you would store in an Oracle database. No one, no one stores their video and no one stores their, their files in, a, in an Oracle database. Um, it's storing the information or the hierarchy or the lookup or the metadata about uh, the information, uh, about the actual content uh, in, the, in the database. Um, so user profile information is very, very common in Couchbase. Um, product and pricing catalog, as I, as I went through earlier. Um, metadata about uh, video and, and audio and, um, and others. Tune Wiki uh, is a company that is a customer that stores uh, their metadata in, in Couchbase. So they also provide uh, audio streaming, but use Couchbase uh, to store the, uh, the, again, the metadata uh, about those videos and those, and those songs. Okay. Uh, any other questions? I'll give you just a couple seconds. Okay, great. Let's, uh, let's move on with the, the rest of the presentation, and then we should have plenty of time at the end uh, for any further questions. Um, so now that we talked about kind of where Couchbase uh, fits within an industry as, a, as an alternative to relational databases for the interactive uh, web and mobile uh, applications that are, that are being developed today, uh, we talked a little bit about uh, the, the high-level uh, use cases and, and, and variety of customers, and then we dug in deeper uh, about some of the specific customers that are deploying Couchbase today uh, in production and, and why and, and what they're getting out of it. Um, so now let's talk uh, just a little bit about uh, what Couchbase is and, and how it uh, how it achieves these uh, how, how it meets these requirements. Um, so at, at Couchbase, we like to talk about uh, having a variety. Uh, of, of multi-purpose capabilities. So on the far left, as you saw with Concur, Couchbase can act just as a caching layer. Uh, our history with Memcached allows us to have uh, to be very, very fast and provide uh, certain uh, capabilities like automatic expiration of data um, that make it a very, very attractive caching option. Uh, 
Uh, and then once you depart from the, from the cache, I like to say that all of the things that make Couchbase a good cache make it a good database because it makes it a fast database uh, and a very highly available one. And all the things that make Couchbase a good database make it a good cache because it's very, very reliable uh, and can be scaled out very, very simply and, and, and linearly. So at, once you uh, get depart from a cache, then Couchbase can be either a key value or a document database. Um, our history with Memcached allows us to store any binary data in a key value format, uh, or you can store that data uh, as JSON um, and get uh, enhanced capabilities like indexing and, and querying from, uh, from Couchbase. Um, the first three here, the cache, the key value, and the document database, excuse me, uh, really are all the same product. It's not a matter of, uh, excuse me, of having different products that you need to install or different modes that you need to run the database in. Uh, we're simply saying that the one product uh, can support a variety of different uh, use cases. And then on the, on the right-hand side, and, and I didn't talk about it too much today, but we also have uh, an embedded database and the ability to synchronize that database uh, back and forth in bi-directional with uh, the larger database that's running either in the cloud or in a, in a data center. Um, and this embedded database that's known as Couchbase Lite, um, and that actually is a different uh, product, obviously a different uh, installation that goes onto any iOS or, or Android device um, and can then synchronize the data for that mobile application uh, with your, your database running in the cloud. Um, and so, I'm, again, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about that today, um, but if you're interested in learning more, there's a lot of information on our website, um, and you can, uh, you can certainly reach out to us, and we're happy to, to discuss that in more depth. Um, the last thing I'll say here, and, and as we saw uh, with Concur, uh, many, many uh, older enterprises who have existing legacy uh, relational database systems, you start using Couchbase just as a caching layer. Um, and then they get more and more comfortable uh, with how to manage and how to understand uh, Couchbase, how to use it, and then start using it in, in other areas as well. And so that's this, this arrow along the right-hand side of starting with a, uh, with a cache and moving into key value and document use cases, um, and then deploying Couchbase uh, out to a mobile device. Oops, sorry. Um, so uh, what, are the, what are the main capabilities and, and features of, of Couchbase? Um, one, uh, we, as I mentioned just before, we provide a multi-purpose uh, database really within the same software. Uh, so it can be either a cache and or key value and or document. Uh, and all of that can then synchronize down to the, to the mobile device. Uh, we are the, the performance and really scalability leader. Uh, there's a number of benchmarks that have been published uh, showing that Couchbase outperforms um, and outscales um, and really is easier to scale uh, than the other NoSQL uh, technologies. We focus very heavily on availability. And as I mentioned, availability is not just uh, fault tolerance, but being able to um, to provide management and maintenance of the database without having to take the application offline. Um, and another really key uh, capability of Couchbase is our simplified administration. We have a command line interface as well as a web UI, as well as a REST uh, API that's all uh, integrated with the software. Uh, makes it very easy to monitor, very easy to manage, to, to add nodes or, or create data sets or indexes. Uh, all from within uh, our uh, web UI, uh, and that can also all be uh, done programmatically, either through our, our command line or directly against the REST API. Um, uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, what makes us a, a multi-purpose database. We'll go through these one by one. Um, again, we have a caching layer. This cache is built into every node. It is a read-through and write-through cache. Uh, the persistence layer underneath uh, is also directly connected to that. Uh, we support uh, JSON, uh, which gives you the very flexible schema. Um, you can also store any other binary data um, within, within Couchbase. And then our Couchbase Lite product that I mentioned earlier uh, is for storing on a mobile device, uh, either a phone or tablet, but also any embedded system, uh, such as a sensor or a Raspberry Pi out there uh, can, can use Couchbase Lite. Uh, our performance and, and scalability comes in a, in a number of ways. 
Um, the caching layer uh, that's not mentioned on this slide is a, is a very key part uh, of our performance, being able to provide sub-millisecond response times for reads or writes in, in any ratio, so at a, a mixed workload. Uh, being able to do that at, at hundreds of thousands or even millions of operations per second, uh, and we do have some customers using Couchbase uh, at, at millions of operations per second. Uh, we like to talk about Couchbase being auto-sharded. Uh, there's no need for you to define a shard key. There's no need for you to ever change your sharding uh, mechanism. All of the data is evenly distributed across all of the nodes of the cluster. And as you add data, as you add nodes um, to, the, to the cluster, we automatically redistribute that data without you having to, to make any decisions or to change anything within the application. Um, once you grow beyond a single cluster uh, or uh, want to distribute your data uh, across geographies uh, so that you have users, let's say, on the East Coast accessing an East Coast Couchbase cluster and users on the West Coast accessing their West Coast Couchbase cluster, both of them getting a very, very low latency response time rather than having to go back and forth across the country. Uh, with Couchbase, you can then replicate the data behind the scenes uh, from RAM to RAM using our uh, cross data center or, or XDCR uh, replication. Um, this can also be used for, for DR and, and disaster recovery uh, if you want to simply replicate the data to a, uh, to a background site or, or, or to, uh, you know, to another data center. And then all of this is achieved through just a single node type. So one of the really important characteristics of Couchbase in its simplicity uh, is that we just have one type of node. Uh, as you add, as you need to add capacity or need to handle higher load with Couchbase, you simply add more commodity hardware that has that one node type installed on it. Uh, we don't have any concept of master or replica nodes. We don't have any concept of uh, name nodes or config servers. Uh, none of the or routers or load balancers. All of this goes away with Couchbase and makes it very, very simple uh, to, to deploy, to manage, and to, and to scale out. Um, our availability uh, comes in, in really three layers. Uh, so on the far left, our high availability, or HA, uh, that's done through in-memory replication from one node to another. Uh, we replicate data as soon as it enters a node so that if that node were to fail, uh, the data is available elsewhere within the cluster. Uh, that protects against individual node failures within a cluster. Uh, if the entire cluster were to go offline or your entire data center were to go away, uh, you'll want to have that data replicated to another cluster or another data center. Um, and you can do that again with our cross data center replication. Um, and then lastly, the third level uh, is through backups. Uh, and Couchbase allows you to take backups of the cluster. Um, you can do this in, in granular uh, node per node or across the entire cluster. Um, and backups are great if you need to restore the data. Maybe you need to restore it into uh, a test or development system. Maybe you need to restore it because your main cluster is offline. Maybe you need to restore it because there was some logical uh, data corruption within your application there was a bug or a user uh, accidentally deleted some data that you want to restore. Backups are great for providing all of these capabilities. Um, and our uh, administration, as I was mentioning before, very, very simple uh, to, to use. Uh, so not only our web UI, uh, that middle uh, section there of the built-in uh, admin con console, um, all of that is built on top of a REST uh, API, uh, and you can also access it through a command line interface, which is useful for, uh, for scripting and, and automation. Um, everything that Couchbase does can be done online. So there's never uh, a case where you have to plan for downtime of, of Couchbase, where you have to kick the application or the cluster offline in order to do some maintenance. Uh, so Couchbase fully supports uh, online upgrades of our own software. We give you the, the ability to change and migrate and upgrade your underlying hardware. Um, we provide all of the indexing, compaction, uh, backup capabilities all uh, online without ever taking the application down, without ever, ever, without ever impacting its, uh, its performance. Um, and this is something that I think uh, you'll really struggle to find with other database technologies. Almost every other technology requires some form, uh, and in some cases a lot of uh, downtime in order to manage it. This idea of planned maintenance uh, where you have to uh, take the application or, or stop writes or 
or, or do something with the, with the system to change its architecture or change its configuration in order to do regular maintenance or scale. Um, and that's never the case with Couchbase. Um, okay, that is the end of what I have to talk about today. I appreciate you all uh, spending the time and, and listening to me today. Um, I do have uh, about 14 minutes or so for, uh, for any further questions, uh, so feel free to, to submit those into the, uh, into the questions uh, section, and I will answer them uh, as we sit here. Um, so again, thank you all very much, um, and I, I wish you all have a good day. Thanks a lot, Perry. We're ready to go here for questions. I'm going to read off uh, some of the ones we have already. Feel free to input your questions while we're asking questions. This first question, Perry, is what is the API used by the Couchbase application layer? Is it proprietary as opposed to the standard SQL-like? Uh, and what rewrite is needed when switching from an RDBMS to Couchbase? Oh, that's, a, that's a great question, Alex. Thank you. So uh, today, Couchbase does use uh, an API. Uh, we provide um, uh, client libraries for all of the major uh, languages. As I mentioned, uh, .NET, Java, C, Perl, Python, PHP, Ruby, Node.js, uh, Go. Uh, I hope I didn't miss any, but if, we, if it's there, we have one for it. Um, and so through those libraries, uh, you have access to the Couchbase uh, API. Um, and the API today is um, uh, a, a read-write uh, on a per-document basis and also the ability to query uh, to some of our indexes directly. Um, this API is different from SQL and from what you're used to uh, from a relational database. Um, and so uh, looking at adopting Couchbase right today, uh, there is a bit of, of change needed. Um, in many cases, it's, it's very simple. Um, and certainly our API is, is very straightforward. Um, but you will have to, you, you won't be able to use SQL directly on top of Couchbase. Um, however, in the very near future, uh, coming out with our 4.0 release uh, that we had just announced this week um, and will be, uh, we'll be putting into beta in April uh, and having be GA uh, towards the, the second half of this year, uh, we are providing uh, a new query language. And we're calling this query language SQL for documents. Uh, it is going to be compatible with SQL. Uh, and so in that case, there should be no uh, really rewrites needed from the, uh, from the SQL language that you're using today. Uh, we will also provide ODBC and JDBC drivers um, that will allow you to connect uh, various tools like Tableau and Informatica on top of Couchbase. Um, and then uh, outside of that, uh, you'll be able to access the, the query language directly. Um, and we've even extended it to make use of specific uh, syntax for JSON documents. Um, so things like uh, traversing a hierarchical JSON structure, searching for a particular field. Uh, this is something that you can't do today with SQL. Um, and if we only provided SQL on top of Couchbase, you wouldn't be able to do these things either. Uh, but what we've done is taken SQL and extended it. And so while we support SQL, we also support operations like unnest. Unnest allows you to open up a JSON object uh, and flatten it and search for different fields within that. Or the command within. Uh, within allows you to traverse and search for uh, a particular object, a particular field within a tree hierarchy. Um, so this is going to be, we, we think, a very, very revolutionary uh, capability on top of the, the Couchbase um, database. Uh, and you can go and see it today. Uh, if you go to query, Q-U-E-R-Y, dot couchbase dot com, uh, you'll be able to see a preview of the language and its capabilities. Uh, and then shortly in, in April, you'll be able to download the software and, and run it yourself. Okay, our next question is, do you have use cases of enterprises storing photos in Couchbase? Is it advisable to store photos on the file server? Sure, so, so photos uh, are another uh, type of media similar to, to video or, or music. Um, and in most cases, I would say that Couchbase is not the best place to store uh, photos themselves. But again, you'll want to store the metadata uh, or store the information about the photos. Um, however, uh, depending on your, your application, 
um, if it's very, very simple and you just need to store some images alongside uh, that information, uh, it may actually make sense to store it in Couchbase. Um, and it's not a matter of it being the, the, a good or a bad thing. It's a matter of it being the, what, what makes the most sense and is simple for your application. Um, and, and the reason I say that is, uh, if you remember uh, a few years ago, there was a, a social game uh, called Draw Something. Uh, that became very, very popular. Uh, a company called OMG Pop uh, that, that wrote that game. Um, and they used Couchbase to store their entire uh, data set. So both the game information, the user information, and even the drawings that people were transferring back and forth were stored in Couchbase because they didn't want to have a separate layer. They didn't want to have to set up a separate database to, to store that. Um, so again, if, if it makes sense and if uh, the, the photos or the images are a relatively small part uh, of, of what your data being stored is, uh, then you certainly can store them in Couchbase um, as long as they're under 20 megabytes each. Um, if, you're, if you're looking more at providing a user providing users with a photo sharing and photo storage website, uh, I don't think Couchbase is the right choice for using, for storing the actual uh, images and photos themselves, but certainly is, uh, is applicable to store the, the metadata and the, the reviews and the comments and the tags and the, the user information. Okay, our next question. Is there a real schema, or does it just take any JSON? I mean, is there some kind of enforcement, or is record any, or is record any JSON? Yeah, a, a record is is any JSON as long. In fact, can be any data. Um, so Couchbase, if it when Couchbase receives a record, uh, receives a document, it will try to parse it for being valid JSON. If it is valid JSON, it will store it as such. If it's not valid JSON, it will store it simply as a binary string. Um, and Couchbase today is not doing any enforcement of the of the schema. Uh, we do have plans, maybe in the in the future, to to provide that. Um, but really, the vast majority of our customers uh, want the ability to have a much more flexible schema. Um, now, you you get into a little bit of confusion when people say that it's schema less or that there's no schema, um, and that's not really true. Um, Couchbase and, and NoSQL. Uh, really are just taking the enforcement of schema, taking it away from the database and giving it to the application. And so it's your responsibility as an application developer uh, to, to enforce and manage that, that schema. Uh, and data still has a schema. Data still has a structure. The really important part here is that two pieces of data, two records sitting side by side are not forced to have the exact same fields. So for instance, my user profile might have uh, two or three different email addresses, where your user profile, Alex, might only have two email addresses. In a relational database, that's very hard to manage because you have to have uh, enough uh, fields for all of the email addresses that you want to provide, uh, where some users may not have all of them, and some users may have more than what you wanted to, to what your schema dictated. And so with JSON and with Couchbase, uh, it's much, much easier and more flexible to support those kind of mixed data formats. All right, next question. Do you think Couchbase can store TCP IP header information? And do you know of somebody doing this? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, I don't know of anybody specifically doing that. I don't see why it couldn't. Um, certainly TCP uh, IP header information is small enough. You're not worried about it getting uh, too large in a, in a single document. Uh, we do have customers storing machine-to-machine -machine data. Um, and uh, actually, we have uh, customers like Cisco uh, storing network uh, traffic information. So I don't see why uh, we couldn't store uh, TCP IP information. That's really just your application to uh, to send that data into Couchbase. Uh, thinking about this a little more, I think Couchbase would be a, a really a great uh, choice for that sort of use case because it's able to take data in so very quickly. And if you're tracking TCP IP packets on the wire, uh, you want to be able to uh, to ingest that data quickly. Uh, you certainly don't want to slow down the the traffic. Uh, that's that's flowing in Couchbase with its caching layer uh, can store data in, in you know, 500 microseconds or, or less um, and can do that at, at hundreds of thousands or even millions of operations per second. All right. Uh, looks like we have a couple more questions. One of the questions that uh, is sitting here that you should probably answer before we're done is how people can contact you with further questions. 
Ah, great question. Thanks. Thank you. Um, yeah, you can go to, uh, you can send an email to Perry, P-E-R-R-Y, that's my name, at couchbase.com. Uh, you can send an email to info at couchbase.com. You can send an email to support at couchbase.com. You could even send an email to sales at couchbase.com. Um, any one of those will will get back to, to me and the, and the right people. Um, you can go on to couchbase.com itself. Uh, I believe there's a, a feedback form there. There's a feedback form within our documentation as well. Um, so there's a variety of different ways, um, and we certainly encourage you to, to send in any and, and all questions. Uh, the, the last place maybe I'll say is uh, forums, F-O-R-U-M-S dot couchbase dot com. And that's where we have our, our open source community uh, with both our engineers and some of our users and customers uh, who are on there asking and, and answering questions. Yeah, if you'd like to, Perry, you could even open up a text document that everybody can see and type those in there for them to, uh, to see. I, I, could do, I could do just that. And while you do that, I'm going to ask uh, our remaining two questions. If anybody else has any questions, please get them in now. We're almost done here. Uh, the next question is, uh, can you add nodes one at a time, or do you have to add them in groups? And that's a good question, Alex. So with Couchbase, unlike other technologies, uh, you do not have to add nodes in, in groups. Um, you can add them one at a time. In fact, you can add them, add or remove multiple nodes uh, at once. Um, so uh, as I'm typing here, uh, uh, you can you can add or remove multiple nodes at once. You can swap an entire cluster um, with uh, with different nodes. You can add nodes of different size and different capacity um, as you move uh, as you want to migrate from one uh, system to another. So Couchbase is very very flexible in, in that respect, um, and that's what, one one of the things one of the ways that allows us uh, to to manage all of that to do all of our maintenance. Um, and, and management of the database online without ever taking it off. Um, to your question specifically, from a scaling perspective, um, you don't have to add uh, groups of nodes. You don't have to double the cluster size. You can have um, uh, even numbers of nodes. You can have odd numbers of nodes. Um, it, it makes no difference to us. All right. I'm going to give you a moment to finish typing here. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Not exactly easy. Uh, and we have one final question here for uh, for you today, Perry. And this question is, how long does a rebalance take? Ah, so a rebalance um, is the process of um, moving data uh, amongst the cluster. So when you change the topology, when you add a node or you remove a node uh, or a node fails and needs to be replaced, um, a rebalance is the, is the word that Couchbase uses uh, to redistribute that data. Um, it doesn't happen automatically, so other technologies uh, do like to move their data around automatically, and that tends to cause more problems than, uh, than it solves. Uh, so with Couchbase, it is an administrative uh, op operation. Um, and uh, the amount of time that a rebalance will take really is going to vary. Uh, it's going to be dependent upon the amount of data, the number of nodes that are coming or going, uh, and the amount of load uh, that the application is putting on the cluster. So Couchbase actually throttles and slows down its own rebalance uh, if the application load um, is, uh, would, would be impacted by going faster. The most important thing to realize here is that it really doesn't matter how long a rebalance takes because the application and the data set is always online, always available uh, throughout that whole process. Um, and so in some cases, a rebalance can take uh, 20 minutes. In some cases, a rebalance can take a few hours. Um, in some cases, a rebalance can, can take longer than that. Um, and, and many of our customers do have uh, rebalances that take both short and, and long times. And it depends, uh, it depends a lot on the, the speed of your hardware, the speed of your network, uh, the, the load of the application, the, uh, and the amount of data that, that needs to be transferred around. Um, However, rebalance, as I said, uh, does not impact the application's ability to access the data. Um, rebalance is something that 100% of our customers use uh, because none of our customers run just a single node. And so at some point, all of our customers have had to uh, move from, from one node to two nodes to three nodes to 10 nodes to 20 nodes to 100 nodes. Um, they use this. They use rebalance to perform online software upgrades. So Couchbase has always supported uh, being able to upgrade the software uh, from our 1.x version to our 2.x version to our 3.x version uh, and soon to be into our uh, our 4.x version. And so there's never a need to take the system offline.
All right. And with that, I believe we are finished. Thank you very much for taking the time, Perry. And uh, this webinar will be available for download later on after this is over. So thank you. My pleasure, Alex. Time. Thank you. And, and thank, thank you, everybody, for, uh, for attending. And I look forward to, to speaking with you further. Absolutely. I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Take care.